Hey guys, in this video, I'm building a Raspberry Pi based NAS with ZFS and Samba. It will boot from an SD card and the data will be stored on SATA drives. These are connected using SATA to USB adapters. The two SATA drives will be used to form a mirror inside a ZFS Z pool. Now, this is going to be a, a little bit more portable than my full size NAS. And um, yeah, so check the links in the description for hardware recommendations and for commands and instructions. And also remember to hit that subscribe button. So uh, yeah, anyway, so using USB devices for ZFS. So people on Reddit, like a lot of people on Reddit have had great luck just running um, ZFS on USB drives for years. But there are things to keep in mind when you do this, when you run ZFS on a USB drive, a few things to keep in mind, things to watch out for. So for one, don't use USB flash drives, right? Use actual SSDs and um, also watch out for, um, you know, the drives overheating when they're inside enclosures. And also you're going to want to avoid uh, using USB hubs or anything else that's in between the drives and the system. Um, another thing you're going to want to watch out for is to make sure that the cable and adapter supports UASP, which is USB attached SCSI protocol. Apparently the uh, adapters that I chose do support this and they seem to be working pretty well so far and they had good ratings and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and recommend those, but I haven't used them long term yet. They are what I used in this video. Um, there may be other things that might trip you up. So it's, it's more ideal to just directly use a SATA drive plugged into a SATA port. If you have one and you can get SATA hats for the Raspberry Pi as well. But for now, I'm just sticking with the USB to SATA adapter, which is going to be working out for me for now. I think they're more than stable enough and more than usable enough. So in any case, the objectives with this NAS um, are, are going to be to share data using Samba. So I'm going to set up Samba shares and I'm also going to want to hit host um, git repos and uh, run a couple databases. I'm going to run MongoDB and PostgreSQL. So I'm not going to be covering the git setup I'm not going to cover setting up Git servers or MongoDB or Postgres in this video. I've done some other videos covering those. Now I am going to cover setting up ZFS, installing ZFS, setting up the Z pool, and um, setting up Samba in this video. Um, I've done separate videos on those, but I'm going to combine them together into one video here. And I'm also going to cover some of the hardware I used and a little bit of the setup. So we're, we're going to cover all of that stuff in this video. All right, so here I am writing the uh, writing Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit version to the SD card. Fast forwarded through that a lot. And here we go. Here is the actual Raspberry Pi. So there are the USB ports that we're going to, um, you know, the blue ports are the, the high speed ports. So those are the ports we're going to be using. And these are the drives. So two Kingston drives. Um, remember, check the link in the description for where you can pick these drives up. They are extremely affordable and highly rated drives. I, and uh, yeah, this is the, the SATA connector on the end of the drive and how it, this is what it looks like when you connect it to uh, the uh, SATA adapter. Now notice these two uh, USB plugs on here. Notice how that they look a little bit messed up. Now, the, the reason for that is because um, they don't they don't fit side by side. The the plug the, the plastic around the plugs is a little bit bulky. When you, you have one sitting on top of the other, the, the way they would have to be to plug both of them into the high speed ports on the Raspberry Pi, they um they they are way too close together and they end up. Um, bending at kind of an angle and putting stress on the ports. So I used a rotary tool to grind away a lot of the plastic. That's why it looks so terrible. They didn't come like this in the mail. So when I got these new, um, they, they did not look like that. So I actually did that myself. It looks terrible, but it's functional. And see how here these fit together nice and snugly. But um, yeah, the, it doesn't bend the ports and the, the, the plugs aren't bending constantly while they're plugged in. So these actually fit perfectly just like this. So uh, yeah, you might either want to, you might want to get an equivalent um, adapter and get one that's a little bit more slim, or you could modify it the way I did. This is what the entire system looks like. There's the drives, there's the Raspberry Pi. And uh, here is our SD card, which is actually going to run the OS. And uh, that 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 doesn't need to be redundant. If uh, that dies, I'm I'm basically just going to restore it from backup to another SD card. So, in any case, here is the power adapter I'm going to use. So, 
This is one I believe came with one of my Canna kit kits. And um, yeah, please excuse the photo. Yeah, Canna kit. This is a Canna kit branded adapter for Raspberry Pi. Please excuse the focus on my camera here. But yeah, it comes with this little adapter Pi switch. It, it came with it, but it's it's actually separate. It's removable, so you don't need it. But this is uh, really convenient when you're working with Raspberry Pis. And I want to be able to turn this on and off. Um, without issuing a command. Well, really, I'm going to be shutting the system down anyways, but I want to be able to push a button to start it up, not plug and unplug it, because that, that's really um, re really not a great way to do things. Anyways, here it is plugged in, and here I am installing Raspberry Pi OS, the 64-bit version, which is great that we can use that these days, um, taking advantage of the 64-bit uh, CPU on here. And there is our uh, you know mini or, or micro uh, uh, HDMI adapter to a uh, full HDMI adapter and I am doing this on an orange Pi monitor so I'm using a Raspberry Pi with an orange Pi monitor and yeah there it is installing um, nothing too exciting just a basic install and uh, yeah th here I am uh, with it plugged into the network over Ethernet and I'm probably going to keep this on Ethernet just to keep it on my private, slightly more secure network, not on Wi-Fi. But uh, I do want to make it portable, so I, I might start using it with Wi-Fi too. And here you can see the fan I connected to the GPIO pins and the heat sinks. All right, so to start out here, we are going to sudo and run apt update just to get our, our repo information all up to date and make sure we have all the information about the most up-to-date packages, just something you should do before you install any uh, packages. So now that we've got that done, that just took a few seconds, we're gonna run sudo apt install, and we're gonna install a few packages here. So we're going to start out with raspberry pi dash kernel and headers. So raspberry pi kernel headers, and those are just needed to uh, get the, the, that's basically a prerequisite for ZFS DKMS. And we're also gonna want ZFS utils dash Linux. We're gonna say dash Y so do we, we don't have to confirm that. We are gonna have to confirm something else though. So we're gonna wait for a few seconds and this is gonna come up with another prompt. So it's so moving along here and there we go. So it's going to ask us to confirm. Basically, this is just a warning about the uh, about how um, the licenses for ZFS and the Linux kernel are incompatible. So if you you know build these together, you can't distribute them as one packaged unit, or you may infringe those licenses. Just um, incompatible open source licenses. Anyways, moving along here, the it. It's installing the package. I cut out a bunch of parts here and sped it up, but this is this is um, just me showing how it's using up all the cores to basically build and install this. So yeah, the system's pretty busy and I, I basically sped this up a lot and cut some parts out and there we go. We, we've got it installed now. Now we're gonna run sudo apt full upgrade. And this is just something that was recommended this may or may not be optional, but it was recommended and this is what I did. So there we go, we've got that part completed. Now we're just gonna reboot. Just to make sure that everything is cleanly rebooted. And now I'm just gonna you know, ping the Raspberry Pi and wait until it, it's pingable. And yeah, I sped this part up a lot, but once it's pingable, SSH back into it. So yeah, the host is back up, SSHing back in, and there we go. So yeah, now we are going to go ahead and say sudo apt auto remove and sudo apt clean just to clean things up. And there we go. So now we're gonna check our devices on the system. So we see here SDA, SDB, those are the two SATA disks, and see down below there, MMC BLK is the uh, that's the SD card that the OS is running on. Now my OS, my boot disk, is basically different from the disks that I want to use for my uh, Z pool. So I'm not going to be booting off of ZFS, which is I I don't think that's what ZFS should be used for. Now, anyways, we're going to specify the devices by um, 
by ID rather than rather than using the name um, like dev STA, dev STB, we're going to specify them by ID because STA, STB is subject to change, especially if you were to move them to another system. And even within the same system, they could theoretically change. So you're, you're better off using the ID like I'm using here. So I'm going to cop, I'm copying these and I'm putting together a command that I'm about to paste onto into the terminal here. So I'm going to paste that in in just a second here. Yeah, and so, so, um, in any case, here we go. We are first, so before I actually paste that command in, I'm running ZFS, zip, so I, I uh, typed that wrong. So I, I just need to run sudo zpool and just show no zpools exist. So I wanted, and this is the command that I was putting together. I was copying and pasting those IDs from above into this command off screen in a text editor. So yeah, basically sudo zpool create tank mirror. So mirror says that's it, it just created it for us. So when we do zpool list, it shows a brand new zpool and it's, um, it's mirrored. So basically, you know, zpool create tank is the name of our zpool and mirror just specifies that it's going to be mirrored. Then we just specify the two devices and we're going to say sudo zpool status. We can check the status of our zpool and you can see we have tank one and that that's our, our pool mirror zero is our mirror and we have two disks within the mirror and we can just run df dash h and we can see there that's our, our tank, our, uh, our zpool is mounted on slash tank one. So now we're going to go ahead and set up Samba. So uh, we're going to get the packages and stuff installed for that and get it up and running and show you that we can actually share things on it and connect to it over the network. So we're going to start that right here. Sudo to root and run apt update first just to make sure your repo is up to date and run apt install Samba to in start installing the package for Samba. So we're running Raspberry Pi OS, the 64-bit version. Now um, we're gonna go ahead and just say Samba password dash A user one. So we're going to type in a password here and create an initial user. So this is going to be the user you use to authenticate when you wanna to connect to the share that we're going to set up. <clears throat> So now I'm going to edit the Samba config file at csambasmb.conf. And I'm going to go down here to the bottom and just add a configuration for a share that I'd like to add. Now, if you like, you can go ahead and clean up this config file too, remove anything that's unnecessary, like printers and comments and stuff like that, up to you. But in any case, adding a share called storage one. Now I'm going to check the disks on the system and note that there's uh, basically a mounted file system called tank one. And so I'm going to edit the path here to share tank one, because that's, that's my data directory that I actually want to share. I probably should have changed the, the name of the share too. But in any case, sharing that file system as storage one. So the share name will be storage one and the, the, the mounted directory will be tank one. So in any case, we, here we see uh, the services up and running. Now I'm going to enable it just to make sure, and I'm going to also run start even though it's completely unnecessary. So I did systemctl enable and systemctl start. Check the status skin. Yep, it's still up and running as you know it would be. So we're also going to want to make sure we restart it just to make sure. Now we're going to go ahead and test this out. Connect to server. And there we go. I'm going to hit connect. And there we go, we're connected to our share. So that's pretty much it. So there you go. Now we have our NAS all set up. We have uh, you know the disk attached, the OS installed, um, ZFS set up, and uh, Samba set up, sharing everything, um, and that that's basically it. So uh, you know next step would be to you know set up databases and get repos, transfer all my files over, stuff like that. So uh, yeah, that that's you know another thing for another day. 
But um, yeah, hopefully you found this useful. If not um, interesting, you might want to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We have a lot more other useful content and a lot more interesting videos out there. A lot of Raspberry Pi stuff, other single board computers, electronics, Linux, Windows, Mac OS, you know, uh, servers, hardware, software, coding, electronics, uh, Raspberry Pi. I said Raspberry Pi is up. You know, 3D printing, um, all, all sorts of interesting tech stuff that you're not going to want to miss out on. So if you want your YouTube uh, feed to, to be a whole lot more interesting definitely hit that subscribe button and also hit the uh, bell icon otherwise YouTube won't let you know when we come out with new videos and um, also uh, you know leave a comment down below if you know something I don't know or if you have your own experiences or any comments questions criticisms whatever you want to say we want to hear it um, so leave a comment not just for me but for any, anyone else who watches this video after you and, and reads the comments um, leave the comment for them also and um, that is about it for today. So uh, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video.